Ladies and gentlemen, side strafe back. And today I'm making first contact with Vegas Pro 15 by Magix. And uh, full disclosure, Magix did provide me with a free copy of this software in exchange for a first impressions. But I thought I would take this opportunity to show off some of my uh, editing techniques, which are very simple. There's nothing advanced here, but uh, I thought I would use this chance to uh, showcase what I use to edit my videos and how I use it. Uh, so with that said, thank you, Magix, very much appreciated. I'm always thankful anytime a developer, publisher, or hardware manufacturer is able to provide me with something for free in exchange for uh, some content. But with that, I had been using Pro 13 for many years, which used to be developed by Sony. Uh, if you don't know, Sony sold off all of their software to uh, Magix some time ago. And uh, well, here we are. What are we gonna do? Horizon Zero Dawn, open world RPG, did a full playthrough of it. Hours upon hours of my life spent editing it. If you're into TV shows, miniseries, movies, you like a cinematic experience, check out any number of my playthroughs, you won't be disappointed. Now, I'm gonna hit this cog, and I'm gonna show off my project settings, because this is pretty much where you wanna start when you're creating a new project in Vegas. I play all of my PC games at 2560 by 1440. That's also the resolution I present videos at on the YouTube channel. Now, the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is what this Horizon title was run on, is uh, pulling 4K 30F. Uh, I downscaled that 4K to 1440p for ease of editing and viewability. I find that not a lot of people are willing to watch 4K content on YouTube simply because it can be rough on one's bandwidth or even computer in general. A lot of people may be watching on laptops, uh, phones, tablets, things like that. And one, 4K is not an option uh, anyway. And two, the horsepower that's required in order to view 4K, not often uh, something that everybody has. So I find that 1440 is a nice sweet spot for editing, uh, playing games on PC, and just viewing on YouTube. Now with that said, Horizon Zero Dawn actually plays at 30 FPS, but the menu, the interface, um, as far as the inventory is concerned, the map, all that stuff runs at 60. So we're using the industry standard of 59.940, uh, field order, progressive scan. You can just pause this, take a look at what I use. Uh, this option here, generally only for computers that have a lot of horsepower, maybe if you're using an AMD Threadripper, something like that, you wanna set your machine to uh, a render and edit at 32-bit full range. You'll notice that you'll get more accurate color representation, deeper colors. Um, but again, very rough on render time. Uh, your render time is going to go up quite a bit if you try to uh, pull off 32-bit. So for now, I'm going to use 8-bit. You can see the difference there. Uh, I will say that older versions of Vegas would tend to crash if you used this, so I had stuck to that anyway. I'm going to play around with this a little bit more. I need to do some render tests, but for now, 8-bit uh, and all of this stuff is, I think, mostly default. Uh, the one new feature, I think, in newer versions of Vegas is the fact that you can disable resample in the project settings, which is something that you will want to do. Uh, and all of these, I've not touched anything in here, so don't worry about that. We'll apply. Okay. Uh, now, the one thing that I will tell you, if you're thinking about getting into YouTube, you're new to this business, first of all, don't quit your day job, but uh, <laughs> it's a tough industry. Second... Always record your commentary separately from your gameplay audio. You'll notice here in my Explorer that I have uh, audio track in WAV format and then the video in MP4. So this is the video plus the game audio. That's one thing recorded with Open Broadcaster, aka OBS. And uh, I've got uh, the Part 9 audio wave here as well. And uh, it's longer because this was actually a, a live stream and I, I've already edited it up to this point so that we can get started with something quickly here. The reason to have these separate is because if your gameplay audio is louder than your voice, you might want to adjust. And you can do that through here, scroll wheel or use the mouse to adjust the volume in decibels. You can 
also hit V as in Victor. Once you have uh, this highlighted, it's going to present you with a blue volume bar. And here you can edit the volume like so. You can also keyframe the audio by simply double clicking to create a square. Do another one. And this is basically beginning and ending. And then you can close that up here as well and go back to zero. You can also right click, set it to zero. You can get rid of all of it by hitting reset all. Now the point of this is let's say there's a part where there's dialogue, uh, maybe somebody talking. Maybe the, the combat audio is really loud, but the dialogue is a little quiet. So we're coming out of something and we want more attention here because there's about to be a conversation. Extras, settings, new, you have trophies. new continue. I so you can hear my commentary there, which we don't really want. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute this for now, but let's go back. You have trophies? I can hang on to them until the Sunhawk returns. Where are Assis and Talana? So you can adjust that on the fly and then you can go back and, and, and change your keyframing. That simple. Vegas is one of the only video editing softwares that I've seen that lets you do this. Uh, I think Premiere is starting to do this, but it's still a little complicated in comparison. Keyframing audio in most applications is absolutely ridiculous. Vegas was the first to do it this way that I've seen. And uh, I love it. It's, it's hard to live without it. Now, I'm just going to reset all of this. That gives you an idea of how to change your audio. There's other ways, too. You can, of course, split files with S as in Sierra. And then you can drag this little blue thing down and change the, the gain there if you want. But I'm going to do Control-Z to undo. Uh, you may have heard a little bit of uh, me here when I hit play there. Now, what I was doing was actually syncing my audio to the video by uh, reciting some of the options at the main menu of the game. So I was saying uh, continue options, whatever, right? And so what I was doing there with the gamepad, as I was going through uh, the, the options at the main menu, I was saying it out loud. So that way I would sync the movement of the video with my voice audio later on so that I can make sure that these things are perfectly synced. After that, you can hold down shift, click all the way up so these are highlighted and hit G as in golf and that will group all of this together so that when you move it they're stuck together and if you click off of it they're still stuck together now you can undo that we can click on one and hit U as in uniform and now they're separated and this is something you want to be careful with because obviously it's easy to um, uh, unsync your your gameplay audio so be very very careful with that also save often control S for that so uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not even going to use this vocal track, but that gives you an idea of how I would use it. Um, the other reason for having your audio separate is, in this situation, since it was a live stream, there's a lot of things in here that you would want to cut out. Like, if I want this to be a cinematic presentation, uh, listening to me talk to the chat about something unrelated probably isn't going to help with that. So always separate your commentary from the gameplay. But we're going to go ahead and delete this track. Don't need it. And for the sake of this video as well, I will only be using a couple of tracks here. Vegas Pro, I think you can use something like 200 tracks. Um, when I'm messing with one camera, I generally stick to uh, the two tracks for the one for video, one for audio. This up here is my, um, my logo sting, which is just an image file. And then I blur it in using a Vegas transition. Um, so let's get started. Aloy is coming down the stairs here. And I think we're going to start with her talking to this gentleman. And we're just going to keep it as a basic intro, her in this tavern. I think that works. Going to fade in some audio. If you go to the beginning of the audio track, you can see the mouse cursor changes. You can just simply drag to create uh, a fade in. You can also change the type of fade in that you get. If you click here again on the border, now that we've dragged it, you can see these different types of fade ins here. So right click on the border for that. Obviously, if you're at the beginning. Again. And there. So we'll just do something simple like that. And now we have a gradual fade in. You can drag it to make it a little bit more intense. 
You can also do that with the keyframing, like I was showing you. So the keyframe starts here at zero decibels, and then you can bring that down if you wanted to do something like that instead. So again, just reset all for now. Keep it simple. And that's her running down, giving you an idea of how we're starting things out. You have trophies? I can hang on to them until... Okay, so we know that she's going to be talking to him for a while. We'll leave all that in because it's story related. And you can use your mouse cursor to click anywhere to kind of scrub through this. Or you can use your arrow keys if you want a little bit more precision. She is going to go through this door and what happens next. So, And then the more you zoom out, I'm zooming with scroll wheel. No key combo, just scroll wheel. And when you scroll out more, zoomed out, you get a faster scrub. Uh, looks like I did some crafting here, which really isn't that interesting. So for the sake of making a, a cinematic adventure, we want to get rid of anything that would be considered fluff. Inventory time, menu time, loading screen, stuff like that. I don't want. So I'm going to probably create a transition somewhere around here before I even start crafting. I'm going to hit S to split. And now I'm going to start just scanning around for something that seems a bit more exciting. What do we have going on here? So this is an additional quest. Uh, again, if you haven't seen the playthrough, spoiler warning. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is maybe get into some travel time here. And so I'm just going to drag this over here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that... Uh, audio level bar there because I don't need to see that and uh, also I can you know I can continue to drag this stuff around since I'm not using the extra space I can have more visibility here if I want uh, again a lot more of this is customizable with uh, Pro 15 compared to the older versions so anyway so we've made our cut there but we don't want to just leave it as a cut right because well you end up with that and that's too abrupt the only time you ever want to do a cut like that is if you're going from different cameras, camera to camera, cut, 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 right? That's the only time. If you're going from one location and time to another, you need to add some sort of uh, transition effect. So we'll go to transitions here. Uh, I'm using the GPU accelerated ones. Not sure that it actually makes a major difference, but really the only ones you're ever going to use, dissolve, fade through black, maybe once in a while a fade through white, cross effect, the, the default one is fine. In this situation, we've got a, a large passage of time and a, and a difference in location. So we're going to just play around with, and it's a long time. So I'm thinking I usually do usually something like five seconds. And that tells you how many seconds there. And I'm going to do a dissolve fade through black because we're going to a completely different area. And I feel like that could even be a little bit more, maybe a, a six seconder. And I generally am pretty precise with all that. So, but if you see, now that we've done that, we kind of want her to be further out. So what we can do, we can either, we could bring it out more like this and think about where she stops and then bring it back here a little bit until it makes sense. So as she's coming out, the fade begins. The problem is the audio transition isn't right. The audio feels weird. So the same thing that I showed you earlier, we can go to this border here, right click, and we're presented with a, a lot of ways the audio can fade into the next track. I, I like this little X one here because you'll see how the audio uh, blends into the next track. Now this is gonna help. See, that's better, but there's one other trick that we can do. Now, remember I was talking about separating tracks. That's what I'm going to do. U as in uniform. Click, drag, and I'm going to bring this over uh, until it says eight seconds. Now, you see I've blended this audio more into this side. So that means that the audio, we're going to start hearing this track's audio here earlier. I'm thinking a little bit more. Maybe even... Something like this.
Could potentially be a little too much because you start hearing the horse gallop, but again, you can play with this until it makes sense. But you see how that helps blend the transition? Audio is very important, and often the audio can affect uh, the perception of a, uh, a cross dissolve. So again, you could play with that if you feel that maybe the horse gallop is being heard too soon. And I spent a lot of time on this. This is where most of my day goes. And see, that's a little bit better. It took a couple of tweaks, but we got it down to where I think it makes some sense. And um, I think the best thing about showcasing this now is the fact that many of you can see how long it takes me to edit one of these videos and what really goes into it. So a little bit of behind the scenes, uh, kind of enjoying it actually. So, all right, there's that. And for me, Horizon, one of the best things about it in any game really is exploration. And Horizon is by far one of the best looking titles on the planet, regardless of whether it's on a console or a PC. It's just one of the best looking games out there. And there was just so much to look at. And uh, I think that showcasing its beauty is, is very important. So I tried to include some travel time. It also gives the viewer an, uh, an idea of where they're at, right? You don't just want things to be abrupt. You don't want to throw somebody into some weird location without knowing how they got there. So I did like showing some of this travel time. And so here we are going into another quest. Uh, you could, of course, decide to cut this a little bit more and, and get her further into it. But again, today's edit is just for example's sake. This isn't going to be something I publish. Um, she finds a tall neck here. I think we can see here by the, uh, the change in audio levels that there's some action, and this is what leads into the next quest. One thing you want to remember, though, as you can see how this is highlighting separate from this, hold shift, G is in golf to regroup those so that we don't go out of sync a little later. Sometimes I forget and make mistakes. But what I'm gonna do here is make another edit to get us to this combat point here. Sierra, and that'll create a split. And I think we will go Somewhere over here, because I remember when I was playing this, I was a little indecisive. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to the tall neck or if I wanted to go to the right. So we will actually, just for the sake of this demonstration, maybe stop it before she even notices the tall neck. And then kind of get us over here. Now, the trick here is going to try to be to match the direction of travel, because when you're doing a single camera transition, you want to make it so you're going from one scene to the next scene in the same direction. Otherwise, it just looks really weird. So here, the, you can see the, the mount is kind of facing off into this direction. If we can match that, that would be the best, because the transition here that we're going to go for is going to be more of a cross dissolve. So let's just do the default one second. And instead of, now, yeah, you could do another fade to black, but it's a little abrupt considering we're in the same area. I like to use a cross effect when we're showing a little bit of a passage of time, but within the same environment. So now you see how we've managed to blend the mount direction from scene to scene. It's, it's pretty close. Again, when you're dealing with one camera, there's only so much you can do. You don't have the luxury of multiple cameras like you would in a show or a movie. So there, and so that, that looks pretty seamless. And you can see we're kind of just getting more into uh, the action of the next scene. Now we're gonna ungroup this audio again and uh, maybe do a three second blend. Let's see how this sounds. See how it makes that transition a lot more seamless based on the audio perception? 
you almost don't even see the edit. And, and that's the whole point. The best transitions are the ones you don't notice, especially if you're watching from beginning to end. That's always uh, the way to do it. You don't want people to say, oh, there was a transition. It should just come naturally. Again, when you're dealing with one camera, it's not always easy, but you do what you can with what you got. So here's a lot of combat. When it's a combat sequence related to a story or quest, generally, I don't really edit it. Um, if it comes to dying multiple times in the game, generally, I would show the first or second death. And if there was another death, I would try to just edit that out and get to the part where we need to progress. Because obviously, if you spend too much time showing every single death, then it's eating up a lot of you know view time and that gets boring. So if I were to die, I would probably show one death and then show me respawning and and making another attempt but here i don't think i died um and we just continue here and we talk to talana and then i think we follow her scrubbing along and part of the quest is to follow her towards red maw so you could potentially edit past this or or show the entire travel sequence Obviously, there's some dialogue here, so anytime there's dialogue, I try not to skip out. So here we're doing our uh, track following. I mount up. And then we eventually get to uh, Red Maw here. Again, spoiler warning. Always leave in. I never mess with cutscenes. And I think pretty much just end up with a big fight featuring Red Maw. And we eventually kill him. And then there's a little bit of a cutscene after that. And then there's some looting. Now I would show a little bit of the looting, not too much. Uh, another nice way to transition is when you're going from kind of more of a still, uh, either like sitting down, standing still, looting, where you're not moving a lot, you can go from this to something else. So we'll show what we were able to loot because people like to see the loot. I'll do another split here. And then I will look for somewhere. Where am I going to go next? Oh, we want to group this up again. See, I generally forget all that. Group this all up. And uh, so eventually we talk to her again and that chump over there. But how do we get to them, right? We, we want to make, it has to make sense. So we eventually we were, just, we're still looting here. So, right, there's like a lot of kind of boring stuff in the way of keeping it more like a movie. So I, I tend to get away from some of that. And uh, it's more about kind of just getting to these people. So there's a point there and I'm going to drag this to that and bring this back up and we will transition let's see maybe a one second should be fine and so there's going to be some music there so we're going to want to do an audio transition and we might even want a little less of this because we've seen the loot for quite a bit so I can do one second there and so that transition is fine, but there's obviously music that starts, so it's quite abrupt. Let's try another three second. See again how the audio changes the whole transition. And you you could of course play with that a little bit. So again, think about movement or non-movement. In this case, standing still, it's okay to go to movement. But if you're moving in a direction, try to match that direction going into the next scene. And then you get into the NPC dialogue. And all of this too, if you think about having commentary here, you can see where the game gets louder or quieter. So often playing with the keyframe, you might want to have your volume at one level and then you might want to keyframe and lower this when there's a lot of action. 
so that your voice is always heard. It's important that you're heard, right? But when I do my playthroughs, I don't talk over dialogue. Um, I, I know when to shut up so that we keep it like a movie. I talk only when necessary or if I have something you know worth saying. But again, for the sake of this, I'm not really going to play too much with that. You get the idea. And that, I think, kind of gives you a basic idea of the editing involved in one of my playthroughs. Granted, Horizon Zero Dawn being an open world RPG required a lot more editing than something that's more linear like a Titanfall 2 or Uncharted. Um, there's just not a lot that needed to be edited in those games because they're fairly straightforward. But Horizon just had so much, uh, you know, loot time, downtime, inventory time, uh, travel time. You had to edit through it uh, in order to present the game in a more cinematic way. Uh, of course, you know, not all YouTubers are alike and some people just post whatever for the sake of viewership. I, well, I spent a lot of my life <laughs> editing this bad boy and uh, considering I got about 60 hours of gameplay out of this, if not more than that, uh, yeah, it was a lot of editing. So I think that's that. I will just show you, um, we can cut this just for the sake of showing you the render settings. Oops, as you can see, once again, things are not grouped. So we'll group that up again. And so, you know, I would put in my my logo exit sting thing and uh, you can put in, you know, you could drop the, you could fade out the volume same way as we faded it in. You could then put in um, a little blur, something like this, whatever, in order to uh, fade out the sting. echoes in there you can add some music in another track or whatever you want now what I'm gonna do is uh, double click and you can see that it's created a highlight here a selection this is your loop region and I'm gonna drag this all the way to the very beginning and uh, I'm gonna click and then make sure that this is where I want it let's say this is where I wanted the video to end and then we can drag it all the way back here sometimes you can leave a little bit of space in case YouTube decides to play an ad abruptly so you can leave a little bit of black space there. It'll just end up being uh, black at that point. So this is going to be our, our render region here between these two triangles. Uh, we can now go to File, Render As. And I've got filters on to show favorites, but you're going to be presented initially with this huge list of uh, render methods, formats, encoders, whatever. I'm going to recommend with Pro 15, Magic's AVC AAC MP4. This does not exist in older versions of Vegas as far as I know. It didn't in 13. But the magical template here has NVIDIA NVENC listed. Now, if you have an AMD video card, maybe it's different. I don't know how well this software supports in, uh, AMD. But what you'll do is pick one of these, click once, and customize the template. I've already customized one. I'm going to click on that, and uh, once it loads up, we will be presented with some options here. Now, these are the options that work for me based on what I deem uh, worthy of my YouTube channel. So again, we want the 2560 by 1440 res, which remember is not an industry standard, so often you have to set it yourself. I want to uncheck these boxes so that it, it adheres to the rules that I'm presenting. Profile high. Again, the industry standard 59.94. And if you're using OBS, make sure you're telling OBS to record at the industry standard 59.94, which pretty much, which will end up as uh, listing 60 FPS on YouTube. So uh, it's progressive scan 1.0 field order. You can you know copy this if you want. Um, this may start out as main concept AVC. Normally, anytime you're doing this, constant bitrate is generally recommended. Um, that means the whole video is going to be the one bitrate through and through. Now, variable bitrate is going to provide you with a max bitrate during high motion scenes, scenes that will take advantage of the bitrate, and then it will lower itself uh, potentially to the average when there's not a lot going on. That's how it's supposed to work. I don't really like VBR. The problem is when you use the NV encoder, which is what I need to use to get my really fast render time, it only provides me with VBR here. I think it might have to do with the fact that I get CBR options here. I'm not 100%, but 
what I've been doing is just making both of these the same bitrate anyway. Now, YouTube includes a chart for bitrate settings because you have to remember that even though you're rendering here, it's going to get re-encoded once you upload it to YouTube, um, which is often unfortunate because YouTube's encoding methods are not amazing. But you want to follow that chart, otherwise sometimes you'll end up with issues and it, it might just take too long to re-encode on YouTube. So if you were doing 1080p at 60 frames per second, I believe it's uh, a 12 million number and you can set that manually if you wanted to. Um, it'll say, I think on the chart, it'll say 12, which I believe is, is just, is 12 million. So here it's actually going to be a 1440p video, which I think for them is something like 24 million for the sake of this example. We'll just leave it at 28. I'll be using NVIDIA encoder. Uh, I'm going to use the high quality preset. This is stuff I'm still experimenting with. So bear with me. Uh, I'm going to use CBR constant bitrate, obviously again, VBR variable, constant, constant bitrate, high quality. My audio quality is going to be uh, 48,000 Hertz bitrate, uh, 320,000. This stuff, I don't think you should really need to mess with. That's going to be grayed out anyway. And the project settings are going to be whatever you set in the, in the cog wheel anyway. So these are my settings again, depending on what you're playing games at, what you're using, what you prefer, what you're capable of rendering, you'll want to set. Uh, everybody's system is going to be different. So then you'll save that. I've named it something else. And then, okay. Then you can click the little star, making it a favorite, turn on filters, and there it'll be. Uh, the new thing about Vegas now as well is it shows you the estimated file size based on what you've chosen to render. Uh, which is nice. Didn't used to do that, at least not in Pro 13. And uh, I'm just going to label this um, first contact. And then we hit render. And yes, because I was doing a test file earlier. This is, of course, going to depend on your system speed. Everybody's is different. But I will tell you, for me, Vegas Pro 15 this motion in the background, how fast this is moving. The old version of Vegas was not capable of this. Literally uh, half the time. It's insane. Uh, I'm looking at this now and even smiling more just because of how fast this thing renders with the NVIDIA encoder. It's it's great. And I'm getting the same, if not even better quality. Um, so thank you, Magix, for finally supporting uh, video cards properly. Again, whether they support AMD, no idea. But um, as far as NVIDIA users are concerned, it's a bag of fantastic. So, I mean, just look at the speed already. You can tell uh, to get the video moving this quickly uh, as if it's real time or faster. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're done here. Really hope that you've appreciated this look at Vegas Pro 15 and how I edit. Again, I'm not a pro, so, you know, uh, I just edit in the way that works for me. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the description for some handy links. I'll link you to my Horizon playthrough. I'll link you to the Vegas Pro software and also the movie studio line that they create. It's uh, a lot less expensive, but it's very similar in terms of editing. It won't render as fast. It doesn't currently have uh, the NVIDIA encoder render settings that Vegas Pro 15 does. Will it in the future? No idea but it does edit fairly similar. It just doesn't have as much uh, in terms of features. Um, there's a lot more under the hood that I haven't discussed about Vegas Pro 15, um, but I've showcased a lot of the things that are just important to me. So with that said, ladies and gents, thank you so very much. Don't forget to beat the living daylights out of that like button and uh, go ahead and share this bad boy with some friends and family if you feel that uh, they would benefit from it. All right, guys, peace out. I'll see you in the next one.